Hello everybody and welcome once again to Forever Stranded. In this episode, I said, well at the end of the last episode I said there's lots of things to do. And one of the things I've done is actually I've played around with one of the configuration files for the asteroid mining. So let's go and have a look at that. So here's my rocket ship here and it's ready for asteroid mining. I think it'll be fueled up and ready. Let's have a quick look. Yes, it's fueled up and it's got chests in it. It always does that. First time you right click that, like that, and you click this, it doesn't show you what it's in. So if you look at this stuff here, what have I got? I've got some iridium ore, aluminium ore, rutile ore, dilithium ore, and some cobblestone. So I need to unload this rocket. I should be able to do that automatically, and it should be done through this block here. And it says it's unloading, and I don't know how to use this yet. Rocket unloader. So I'll have to look into that, because it should just un unload that and then put everything into this crate. So let me just double check that. What have I got on my... I think this is probably linked again still to the other place. Yes, it is. So that was linked to the space um, elevator. So let's try right-clicking this and onto that. And that actually has drawn a line. I saw that draw the line. So I'm not 100% sure what I have to do to get this to unload. So maybe I just have to... I don't understand what these do in the sense of... Except if I go blue, green, <laughs> blue, red and orange, uh, green. And if I unclick it like that, I was expecting it to unload stuff. But I don't see anything coming in here. So I may have to... I'll do some research. But anyway, in the meantime, let's uh, unring her. Let's empty this, this chest out again. It does the same thing. I, I'll have to ask. So look, I've got this one here. That's uh, some iridium ore. Shift right click again and do the first chest. And we can take out everything we've got in here. And then we'll put that straight into this crate. In fact, I'll put that, those blocks away. Actually, I'll put those blocks somewhere else put those into the indexer because it's sort of decorative blocks I tend to keep in the indexer again I'm too far away oh just a little bit short one block so now the, the rocket is now empty let's put that last block of cobblestone into there and sort that around so how did I do that let's have a look so we need to go back over here to our data processing center like that and in here I've got an asteroid chip which hasn't got enough composition data yet distance data is empty mass data so for some reason it's not I'm not I've reorganized this stuff in here this has got composition data in it so storing to the buffer and it should come into here so let's just get some more let's just get another chip you might notice these in here I put those in when I was building the um, space elevator just to test to see if that was the, if that was the cause of the problem I got with those and it does it as it turns out it was to do with the power so i just went to creative mode and got 64 of those but i don't need them so i'm going to remove those but it was a good test they've put those and you get about oh i don't know it was four million rf or something like that so i need the chips where have they gone to they're not in here i can't see any data chips in here and they're not in here, maybe there's in here. I've got eight, yes. This'll do. So let's go down here in composition scanner. Store to chip. So that should now have a thousand in here. So <clears throat> excuse me a second. If I put these of course, yes, I have to do it from your hot bar. Wrong one. 
Right, so I can put this composition data directly into this by storing it to the buffer. And this one is now going to fill up because this chip has got everything it needed. Now it's done it, and now it's gone to the output hatch here. So that was the second stage, of course. The first stage was to make a chip. Now this one here has got distance data in it. In fact, it's actually got all the data in the composition and mass. And then the asteroids here, we can look down the bottom and I've created some medium asteroids here. So this will give me 18 iridium ores. In fact, it gives me 18 of all types. It's a shame that this doesn't actually stay where I want it to stay. And this one gives me 99 of all the types. So that's a lot better. So what we need is a, is a chip. Let's go and get a chip. I need a satellite chip, don't I? I don't think I've got one with me, so we're going to have to see if we can make a satellite chip. This is the one that's already programmed. Oh, so it's an asteroid chip. Yes, I can craft a space station. I can't craft it. Let's hold on. Because they are the same. They look almost identical, don't they? So. This one. So we should be able to make one of these, actually. Yes, it's just a crafting recipe. So now, right click into here and put the chip in, the asteroid chip. We have to wait till night time because it's not open. When it's night time, we can then program that. So in the meantime, let's take this asteroid chip that we've just finished programming and put it into this rocket here, into its guidance computer. Because it always gets consumed when it's actually finished doing that. So this is already fueled up. As you can see, there's a redstone signal coming from here. So all we need to do now is to launch this and wait. As you can see, with nine engines, it goes up very fast. Let's have a look at the state of this. And just wait you see the altitude is going up velocity went up very fast to the top and of course the fuel comes down in fact i think it's about empty at the time it reaches its altitude oh no so now it's in in progress it's going to take two minutes 56 seconds so i shall come back right just about finished doesn't it let's have a look we should see the rocket appearing any second now uh, with its load. So how long does it take? I'll have to wait a few more seconds by the looks of it. Just quickly check that. Yes, it's coming down now. I should have waited till it starts to come down, shouldn't I? Here we go. Just there. One thing I noticed that you get square suns in in my uh, in Minecraft, but we get round planets. Very very funny, isn't it? So the sun is going down slowly. So let's have a now look at this one. Right click this, of course. It, oh, it didn't this time. But this time you see we've got less actual ores than this particular one because I'd programmed that earlier from another one. But we've got the same ones. We've got iridium ores, aluminium ore, rutile ore, dilithium ore, and cobblestone. So let's see what we can get rid of from there. Put that again in this chest over here. Just so it's just a cobblestone now. I wish I'd get that unloaded to automatically unload that. I'll just, I'll find it out. Don't worry. And get back to either raise an issue for the, for the developer and see, we'll find out what's going on. So now I've just got to wait till night time. So I shall be back. Let's go over to the let's go over to the telescope and wait there until night time. In fact, I'll wait and uh, you won't wait at all. 
See you in a few seconds. Right, any minute now the observatory should open. One, one funny thing that happened when I was um, testing the space elevator bit out was the developer asked me to remove all the mods except for Lib Vulpis and uh, Advanced Rocketry, which I did, and then played the game. Unfortunately, almost everything disappeared, including the base. So the whole of the ship disappears because that's part of it. It's all done in chisel. <laughs> So I was getting attacked by mobs and I got no armour on, I just got my space suit. It's quite funny really. And because all the lighting is actually glowstone lighting, so that was also uh, disappeared as, as I replaced the, uh, the mod. There we go. So now let's have a look at this. So now I can process discovery since it's open, which is now done. So now we have these chips with nothing on it. So now let's go and take that over here and put that into here. I'm not going to put it in there. What you do is you put it into the input hatch like that. In fact, it's gone. It's already been taken in, so it's already here like this. And you'll see now it's getting data. I need to probably put some masses okay. It only needs a thousand of each. Distance data is coming in, I think. Oh no, it's going down and I need some more composition data so let's just get some more composition data the manual way maybe I'll have to rebuild this again I'm not exactly sure by putting see I put some stone blocks in here and well anthracite bricks and then I put a, 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 red, a lever on them so that should give a redstone signal to each of these because it needs a redstone signal for that to operate but maybe that uh, doesn't work as well as it did as it should do anyway let's have a look composition data is here and it you see it has filled up but it's not going through to the other place so let's put one of these chips into here like that and then a store to chip so now we've got a thousand data in here composition data and come around here and then put that composition data into here like this and then store that to the buffer so then the buffer gets filled up so maybe I'll just rebuild this and see exactly what's happening because I reckon that should work that's on and that's on before I only had one in the middle maybe it's a good idea to move everything back a little bit I'll try that as well so anyway so that's now working and when this is finished it'll appear in this output hatch here this is another one I've done but this one is actually a small asteroid you can see this in fact strangely enough if you press control you'll see the metadata you can press shift on that oops we've got to keep my thing on it and you'll say at the very bottom of the uh, I think that's JSON text it says small asteroid so that one will only return redstone ore gold ore and cobblestone and iron ore so nothing really exciting so what I could do with that chip is just to get rid of it so this will fill up and that's where we started from so another episode completed and I said last time I was going to uh, tell you what's next on the what we could possibly do next well let's have a look at what we can actually do next in advanced rocketry we have some more bits and pieces. We actually have, now we have in this version, we have beacons. So we can actually make a beacon. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but you can, we can actually use that for locating places on the, on the, on the planet. We've also got um, terraforming. So you've got, you can you build an atmosphere terraformer. And the interesting thing here with the atmosphere terraformer is that when you ch let's go we'll do that on the moon we'll try on the moon every time it goes up a little bit it changes the biomes because the biomes are actually pressure dependent so which biome it is in fact that's another thing i want to go and test because he says he's fixed the biome scanner now because it was broken so that's another thing to check and the last thing i want to check in here is the drill i think it's called orbital miner orbital laser drill this one here and these are all multi-book structures I think so let's have a quick look at that before we before we go uh, it's this one here shift right click 
let's have a look. So there we have, where's it gone to? Atmosphere terraformer, so that's a multi-block structure. And beacon, there's another one. Uh, and the orb orbital laser drill. Gravity controller I've done, that's actually, uh, you put that on a planet to increase the gravity. In fact, the, those components are actually in the space station. Space elevator we've done. Railgun we've not looked at either. Uh, Biome scanner we've done, and that's had been fixed. And the rest of these, I think we've all done those. Yes. So that's what I'm going to plan to do for the next few episodes. So until then, bye for now.